we're now ready to start chapter 16 of the book. That's about the sun. We started the semester, remember, talking about stars and constellations, motions in the sky, just background astronomy stuff, how do things get named. And then we moved into a little bit about the properties of stars, magnitudes, uh, parallax, how do you can find distance, then about light and optics. And then from there back to stars, more information about stars, the HR diagram, masses of stars, all, all kind of things we're able to discover by looking at the light of stars, the spectrum of stars, spectral types, etc. Then we started the idea that maybe we need to talk more about it, this, and we started talking about how stars form. Uh, and then uh, we talked about planets as a consequence of star formation. And so now we're ready to talk about the sun as an example of a star. Most books start directly with the sun and then talk about other stars. But I like to talk about stars first so you have an idea about what stars are like. And then we move on and talk about the sun. All right, so the sun's our nearest star. Uh, Earth derives life off of the sun. Uh, virtually all life on Earth is based on the sun. So it's very, very important. Uh, obviously, plants have to have sunlight in order to live. Uh, uh, but you say, well, what about, you know, what about a tiger? Tigers don't need to have sunlight to live, but they live off of the eating. They eat animals that eat plants. So the, if the sun goes out, all the plants die. All the animals that eat the plants die, all the animals eat the animals that eat the plants die, uh, then uh, all the insects die that eat, eat the plants and the decaying other dead animals once they've eaten them all, uh, fungi will die off, I mean pretty much everything dies off, uh, the sunlight gives heat, heat to the uh, earth, without the sun shining on earth, the earth gradually cool off, I and mean, we get cooler every night. And so imagine, you know, the temperature can drop, uh, you know, uh, 30 degrees at night uh, compared to what it is in the daytime, you know, 20 to 30 degrees. Well, that means if the sun doesn't come up the next day, then the temperature will drop 20 or 30 degrees during the day, and then 20 or 30 degrees the next night, then 20 or 30 degrees the next night. So it doesn't take very long if the sun were to go out before life on Earth would be extinguished. So, so we are essentially all creatures of the sun. One thing that was discovered when Skylab was in orbit around the Earth was the sun is actually not constant in light output uh, and energy output. The sun does get slightly brighter and dimmer over time. We also know the sun goes through periods of activity. Uh, uh, more activity uh, during some times, other, less activity during other times. And so this, this, this range of activity on there uh, we call the solar cycle. And it turns out there's more than one solar cycle. There's a solar cycle that's about every 11 years. There's one about 22 years. Uh, there's one that's about a century or so. Uh, there may be one that's hundreds of years. Uh, we don't really know all, all the details here. But we know, do know the sun goes through cycles of activity. And so uh, understanding the sun becomes very, very important to understanding life on Earth. Uh, we do know that there are other G2 type main sequence stars. Uh, so they'd be very similar to the sun. And they occasionally go through periods in which they have radical changes in them. And so the question is, could the sun do that? And if it did, what would that do to Earth? So we'll talk some, some about, something about solar activity later on as well. Galileo Galilei uh, uh, recorded observations of the sun. Uh, others had seen observations of the sun prior to that. When the sun's rising or setting, it's not blindingly bright because of atmospheric extinction. Uh, and so uh, people have noticed occasionally spots on the sun. Uh, Galileo recorded spots, and he noticed that on different days, the spots appear to move. And so his interpretation of that was the sun rotates. Uh, the sun has what we call differential rotation, because what, what that means is that at the equator, across the equator of the sun, that it rotates, but it takes about 25 days. At the polar regions, however, uh, it rotates 
but it takes about 30 something days to go around at the polar region. So the equator goes around faster. Uh, and, and this can be seen by watching some of the sunspots near the equator go around. And the ones in the sunspot take less time to cross the face of the disk than the ones that are high latitudes. And so this, this we call, as I said, differential rotation. And, and so differential meaning it's different in different parts of the sun. And a uh, question for you, just think about it for a couple seconds. Does Earth have differential rotation? The answer is no. Wherever you are on Earth, it goes around in 23 hours, 56 minutes. So why does the sun have differential rotation, but Earth doesn't? Well, because the sun's not solid. We, we euphemistically call it a big ball of gas, but it's really a little more complicated than that. Uh, but the sun's definitely not solid, and so different parts of it can easily go at different speeds. Uh, we find that Jupiter and Saturn are also not solid, and so uh, they're, they're basically uh, big balls of, of, of fluid as well, uh, gas. And so they also have differential rotation. Uh, the galaxy has differential rotation because it's not solid. Different, di uh, uh, if, uh, different distances around the galaxy go around at different, different times. So, so differential rotation is actually something that's pretty common in the universe. Uh, it's just that we don't think about it a whole lot because we normally deal with solid objects that we think of as rotating. Observing the sun is very difficult. Uh, uh, the McMass Solar Telescope here is located in uh, Arizona at, at near Tucson. And what happens with this is that near the top of the telescope up here is what we call a heliostat. The sunlight hits that and is focused down a long tube. Uh, they actually, uh, the tube actually has air pulled out of it, so it's a vacuum. Uh, uh, and so there's no, there's no atmospheric effects in there, and it, it focuses the image of the sun onto basically a giant, into a giant observing room un underneath down here where uh, you can track the sun and the solar activity. Uh, another location is the Dunn Solar Telescope. It's located at uh, a place called Sunspot, New Mexico. Uh, and Sunspot, New Mexico is in the mountains. It kind of overlooks Alamogordo. And, and so uh, the sun, again, it, it hits a heliostat at the top. It's focused straight down. Okay, well, this big building, and you can tell these are doors. It's just regular sized doors down here. Okay, this giant building right here uh, 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 is, is, turns out you're only seeing half of it. If you go inside the doors, you find out that, that the building actually extends almost an equal distance underground down here. So you go in and you look down, and the observing room is at the very bottom of that shaft right there. And so uh, uh, now normally you don't have people looking at an eyepiece or anything like that. Uh, uh, instead, there's instruments and things connected to the bottom of, of the uh, shaft. And they're measuring the spectrum of the sun, measuring spectrum of different parts of the sun, uh, measuring magnetic fields in the sun, measuring solar activity on the sun, all kind of things. You don't really have to have that big of an instrument, though, to measure the sun. Uh, a friend of mine, Julie, here, uh, a number of years ago, uh, uh, sent me this picture right here that she had taken of the sun using that telescope right there. And that's a, that's a little small telescope, but it's a very high-quality telescope. Uh, that, that telescope by itself is considerably more expensive than anything that, that I could personally afford. And so uh, that, that instrument right there took the picture you see. And you look at it and you see a couple of things in this picture. Uh, first of all, you can see that she, she, uh, she highlighted those sunspots that are, that are up here, uh, down here. Notice that the picture is kind of grainy. Okay. That's real. The sun really does have a grainy appearance to it. That's not an artifact of, of the uh, image. Secondly, notice it's darker on the outer parts than in the middle. That also is a real effect. When you look at the sun, the edges look slightly darker, and that's called limb darkening. Uh, uh, so it's a real effect. Uh, limb is uh, an astronomical term. It means the edge of something that you're looking at. So the limb of the sun is the edge of the sun. Now, why is it darker? Well, where's all the heat being generated in the sun? Where's all the nuclear fusion happening? 
it's happening in the center of the sun. Okay, so that means the farther out you go, the cooler it gets. So now what's the sun made out of? It's a gas, hydrogen and helium. And so uh, gases, you can only see so far into them, it's almost like seeing into fog. Uh, uh, when, when gases are very, very hot, they're not really truly as transparent as you think of gases normally being. And so you can only see so far into the sun. And so what happens is that when you are looking in here, you're seeing a certain distance into the sun. When you're looking near the limb, you are seeing the same amount of distance into it, but that distance is now less depth into the sun than it was when you were looking near the middle. And so uh, that's why it's not going to be as hot near the, the edges of the limb of the sun uh, as, it, as it looks like when it's looking in the middle. Now, you remember also that the hotter something is, the brighter it is. So limb darkening is directly related to being able to see deeper into the sun where it's actually hotter. Okay, so no, another diagram here uh, describing how limb darkening works. Ultimately, what we want to do is observe the sun from space. And so that'll be, that'll be the topic of my next little, little mini lecture.